King's Intro to Graphic Design class, we're very fortunate to have Jennifer Spencer of the Spencer Group. She has been placed in creatives in the Kansas City area now for 16 plus years and have been doing an amazing job. I know. No plus, come on, I'm not that old. All right, so at, at least like a minimum of 16 years? Yeah, okay, 16 not plus years yet. Is, all right, yeah, and I, it's really important for, to me that you guys meet her now, that you're just getting started because when you graduate in a couple of years out in the career field and you're no longer entry level designer, you're looking for work, you want to do something different, this is the person that you would call. And um, anyway, I'll let her tell you all about what she does and how she does it. And please, if you have questions, ask her. I, I think yeah, definitely, definitely. Oh, okay, okay. all right. Okay. I'm Jennifer Spencer. I have a company called The Spencer Group. I know, super creative for being creative, right? I don't know who came up with that. Um, there is a group of one, that would be me, a dog and a cat, which I guess does now constitute a group. So, and uh, everything I just did is everything you shouldn't do when you show up for a job interview. Being 11 minutes late, drinking water and choking, having to leave, I mean seriously, oh my gosh, like I did everything that I wasn't supposed to do. And then I even came up with excuses. Well, I was on the phone with a client, and then there was traffic, Oh my gosh. Okay, so just listen to what I do, but don't really do what I do. So, um, I am a headhunter, and it's okay calling me a headhunter. I'm not offended. It's all right. I'm the same thing. It's a recruiter. If anyone's ever heard of that, uh, there really are people like me that do what I do for this industry, which is really good news for you guys. Because what I do is I am paid by companies, advertising agencies, and companies to find talent like you for their open positions. So the fact that there's an industry out there that is willing to pay someone like me to find designers like you, that's really fantastic news because it means that there's a need for people like you. Um, had you graduated in 2009, 2010, I would have been like, well, it was really great knowing you, have a great life, good luck, and we'll all be working together at Starbucks, including myself. Um, man, that was rough, 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 rough. But the good news is if you stick with this, this career choice, the market is picking up, the market looks good. If the market looks good in Kansas City, that means the market looks good everywhere. So if you're gonna think about getting outside of the Midwest, it's great. So that is really, really awesome news. The other awesome part about this is that you actually have chosen a really good school to start your design studies at. Um, I've spoke to quite a few schools in the Kansas City area, and I can honestly, honestly tell you that Johnson County consistently produces really top-notch talent. Um, there are many, many people that have graduated from this program and have gone on to land really great design jobs at some of the best agencies in Kansas City, including agencies outside of Kansas City, or they've gone on to marketing departments of companies and they've done really, really well. So that's something that you should know is that your money is actually being spent very well and that you have really good professors here and you guys will actually graduate with really good books, which that's super, super, super exciting. So I thought what we would talk about today is just all that stuff you need to know going into this field and then what is it gonna take to actually get a job after you get out of this program. I know you're probably still a couple of years away, would that be right, before you're out? You're just out? getting started. You're literally just getting started. But um, you know what, you might as well know now because then you can actually start preparing yourselves for these next few years for those of you that decide to stick with design and then you can actually go, okay, now I know what I need to do. The number one thing I'm gonna go ahead and start off tonight with is a portfolio. That is the number one thing for a designer, for an illustrator, for a web designer, multimedia designer, screen printer, leather worker, I think I heard someone say, um, photo retoucher, whatever you are deciding to do in the arts, you are going to have to have a portfolio. And nowadays, most portfolios, I, oh my gosh, 99.9%, it's online. So you also need to think about that. Everything that you do when you get ready to graduate and show, it's gonna have to be online. Um, there's a lot of free sites out there or really, really inexpensive sites that are templates that you can just literally go there and upload your work and you don't have to freak out about like, oh my gosh, I'm not a web designer. How am I gonna do this? Um, there's plenty of sites out there, but then also, the flip side of that is you can actually use your creativity to the full max and design your own site and actually come up with your own site, which a lot of my candidates do. Um, in fact, today I just talked to a writer and uh, he had a, a great site, Ham, his last name's Ham, 
and his site's called hamjammery.com. And it's just that he's created a brand for himself. So, hey, Andy Ham, I'm saying hi to you. Um, I thought it was great, but he's come up with a brand. He has branded himself. He's created his own website, and that's where he loads all of his work. And you can go to that, and he constantly has it, has it updated. And it's really inexpensive to own your own site, so I would highly recommend you guys doing that. And start now. Start learning how to do that now. For those of you that are thinking you want to stay print, that's great. However, I would still take some classes in web. Take some classes in web design. Um, every hiring manager that I talk to now, a print design position at an agency or even on the client side is not just print anymore. It includes the whole nine yards. When you're working on a campaign, you're working on a campaign that includes all the elements, all the mediums. You're gonna do everything print, but then you're also gonna have to take that concept and you're gonna to have to bring it over to the web. So learn web. If you're already here and they've got some really great classes, go ahead and learn it. I know it's very, it could be very stressful to you and it could be kind of you know, nerve wracking. Just do it, okay? Be Nike and just do it. Because um, it will seriously help you. And it also creates job stability. If you can graduate and you can say, I've got all of these print experiences and I've got web experiences and I know HTML and I can code in it and I can do all front end development. Holy cow, job security. And that really is, I mean, if we all really talk about, it, yes, we want to do this because we love it, but at the end of the day, we also need to make money. We're all not in nonprofit unless you go to nonprofit, but even then you still are going to get paid. So even then it's not really nonprofit. So we're here to make money. So if something I can give you, if looking back, starting out when I started and then looking back now, that is something that I now realize more than I did then, which is always the case, to always make yourself marketable. Keep yourself marketable. Because the issue is we are going to have another downturn. We are going to have an, another economic downturn. That's my two cents. I could have people disagree with me, but I really feel like gone are the days of the 20 years of boom that we used to see. And I really think that if you do not keep yourself marketable, you guys are getting a pink slip. And unfortunately, being in the creative services and in the marketing world, we're the first to get let go and we're the last to get hired back. We are sometimes considered a necessary evil, especially if you're in a marketing department at a company where that is not their sole, that's not what they do. They produce widgets. Well, their bread and butter is producing the widgets. So when they look at marketing people, they're kind of like, eh, we need you, but gosh, you know, numbers are low, sales are low. Guess who's the first thing going? Marketing. So if you can make yourself marketable and you can have those additional skills where those companies look at you and go, I can't live without you, that's what you wanna do. You constantly wanna be a student. That was something that I felt like a lot of people um, that had been in the industry for a really long time, and when I say a long time, I'm talking like eight, nine, 15 years, when we had our economy here in Kansas City just tank in the marketing and advertising world, there were a lot of people that had got pretty complacent. They went to their jobs every day, they were happy, they did a good job, but they didn't keep up their portfolios, they didn't keep up their resumes, and all of a sudden, they were let go, and they were like, oh crap, what do I do now? And so these people had flooded the streets, and there were too many of them for the too few jobs that were out there. So if you can stay on top of trends, um, continuing education, I, what you're doing, oh my gosh, that is a brilliant thing to do. Um, come back to Johnson County, take a class. If you're like, man, I haven't done this in a while, go back and take a class. And now companies, more and more of them are actually paying for you to go to school. They'll pay for you to do it. So why wouldn't you take them up on that opportunity? So if your company will pay for you, go, 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 go. Um, so portfolio. Here, I'm pretty, you have a portfolio class here. Okay, so Johnson County offers a portfolio class. So they're gonna give you everything that you're gonna need to know. And they do a really, really great job because it's senior night. I've come for the last five years and the portfolios are awesome. I mean, they, they know what they're doing. They're teaching you guys the right things. Um, and you, you guys are gonna have a really, really great book. But if you can start now on the projects that you're working on and start thinking about what could go in my book, one of the things that I consistently hear again from hiring managers is conceptual skills and campaigns. Can these people concept 
and can they develop a campaign? And you might be going, what the heck is a campaign? I don't even know what that means. What that means in the advertising and marketing world is that you have an idea that can go across a lot of mediums. You didn't just come up with a really great idea for a poster and then you just kind of left it there and it really didn't go anywhere. No, you had an idea that actually was able to be turned into a three poster campaign. So not only did I develop this poster, but the idea had such great legs that I developed this one and then I developed this one. Oh, and by the way, since it was for one of my favorite bands, I also came up with an entirely new logo because I think their old, old logo sucked and here's their new logo. Plus I did a t-shirt for them, plus I did stickers, plus I redid their website. That's what I mean by a campaign, that that idea goes across everything that that brand touches. Um, think if you can start now, thinking that way, you guys are going to be light years ahead of others that are graduating. And unfortunately, uh, fortunately and unfortunately, Kansas City actually is quite a mecca for producing really talented design students. We've got really good schools here that produce really top knowledge, top, top notch talent. So when you graduate, you're actually competing with a lot of people. So you've got to do something that makes you guys stand out. And the thing I like about Johnson County is that we have real, not we, I, I don't teach here, but I feel like I do. Um, I've been here so much. The teachers are real world. They, they're working. They're like, yeah, I go to work every day at Bernstein Rain, and then I come here at night and I teach. They're there. And so they're telling you, here's what's happening right now. You know, here's how we used to do it. Here's how we're doing it now. Absorb that information. Um, so campaigns would be one of the first things I could, I, I would recommend that you guys start thinking that way and conceptual skills. Um, concepting, meaning a big idea. That it's not just, oh, that was just a really cool design because I liked it. No, tell me what the story was behind it. Tell me what the concept was behind it. Um, there's a student here that graduated years ago and he actually is a second career student. So he went to journalism school, did that for a while, and then realized one day that he was like, my gosh, I really wanna be a designer. And so he put himself back into school, being like a full size adult and all, totally restarted and became a really talented graphic designer. And one of the things that I think really put him, I don't say think, I know that it put him ahead, was that he had what he called a process book, um, or it could be called a concept book, and he brought it to every single one of his interviews, which showed, here was my idea and here's where it sparked. And it could have been something as simple as, I was driving down the road and I saw this really cool barn. <clears throat> and then from there, he thought about this and then it turned into this and then it turned into this. And before you know it, 15 pages down, you now have the finished product, which ended up being a, a product offering of natural organic soaps and men's shaving products. But it was incredible. And you looked at how he got from a barn to organic men's shaving products and you were like, oh my gosh. But what that did was it let us into his brain. It was like, oh, I see how this guy thinks. And if he attacked a problem like that, he's going to attack our clients' problems like that. So that's another really, really great thing, especially illustrators. You guys already do this. You already doodle, you're already processing things, you're already starting here and this is what you end up with. They've already kind of got it. If I can recommend to you designers to start doing the same thing, start doing it. It's very cool and you can bring it to an interview and then you can actually show the interviewee what you've been working on and it's actually really, really cool and not many people do that. So I'm giving you a total secret that will put you, well, now it's being filmed. So never mind. Forget it. It's done. I take it all back. I'm just kidding. Um, so that would be my first thing, portfolio. Uh, the second thing, let's see, let's talk about resume. Um, as a designer, you guys have the luxury of being able to actually have a somewhat designed resume. Those of us that are in the, you know, marketing management positions, we have to have these really boring resumes and it just has to list blah, blah, blah. In design, they're kind of expecting you to have a little bit of a designed resume. There needs to be some pomp and circumstance to what it is that you're showcasing. If you just throw out a piece of paper and it's just done in Times New Roman, it's like, um, okay, kind of boring. You actually get to do something pretty cool. Don't get wacky crazy though, because I've also seen the opposite, where it was so over-designed that I couldn't focus on what the meat of the resume was. And in fact, I even had a hard time reading it because it was 
a weird font and it was going into lines and circles and I was like, I don't know what's going on. But I've also seen very cool uh, resumes where they've you know, maybe done something with the initials of their name and they've created a very cool brand and everything they've done has had that brand with their initials. Or I've seen, and actually, I think it worked out really, really, it might've been Laura Seamers that had her resume, everything was like slanted. Mm -hmm. It was super easy to read, but it was, everything was slanted. And then she had another set of information going this way and then another set. So there was complete design to it, yet it was completely functional. And I still got what I needed and I still looked at that and went, okay, that was unique. That was cool. So have a very well laid out resume. Um, you're gonna wanna put that on your website. So not only are you gonna want your work, but you're also gonna want your, web, your uh, resume, then you're gonna wanna have your contact information. References would probably be a really great idea. Um, you could even put some information about yourself. You know, here's what I like to do in my free time. Uh, you know, in my free time, most of the time you designers actually continue to design even in your free time. And so it might be, you know, during the day I want to do this, but at night I actually love making jewelry or I'm a fine artist or I do leather working. Is that what you said back there was leather working? Did you say that? Me? No, the gentleman right there. You didn't say that. What did you say? Was it leather? I thought you said you wanted to go into leather working. Logo, logo design. Logo design now has turned into leather working. That's <laughs> awesome. Well, in case someone wants to go into leather working, you know, there you go. Um, wow, that's the first time I've never had logo design be turned into leather working. Okay, well, that's all right. Um, so put something in there that makes you be you because each of you are unique individuals. Each of you are bringing something to the table that's different than the other person. Um, agencies especially have cultures and those cultures are very different. You're going to go to one agency and it's going to be totally different than your next agency that you go work at and it's because each of them have a culture and by putting a little bit of something about you out there it will help you find a better fit and that's really what you're looking for too is a really good fit. Um, you don't want to be job hopping job to job to job and be like I can't find my place. You want to find a good fit. Um, there are lots of ways that you guys can research to see what other people are doing. A great site is Behance, if anyone's seen that. Literally, I just went out there today and I was just overwhelmed with the amount of really good portfolios that are out there of people I don't know, never heard of, they're all over the world. And that is a great place for you guys to start. Um, Carbon Made is another one. Um, I know some of the design annuals like Graffice and Communication Arts run their own portfolio websites that you can submit information to. I would go there and check those out too. And so you can actually see what people are putting out there and that you gotta you know, raise the bar, raise the standard so that, and meet the standard so that you can do that. Um, okay, so we've talked, about, we've talked about resumes, we've talked about portfolios, interviewing, should well, jump the in thing, there. The thing too about working on websites is it gives you an opportunity to be exposed to what good Yes. Especially uh, communication art and yes. AITA. Yes. And, and you know, the more you know what good design looks like, the easier it is to design well. That is a very, 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 very good point. Very good point. You guys should get to a point where you can look at something and go, that's good and that sucks. And I'm not a classically trained designer, but I've been looking at portfolios for so long and I was really lucky that my internship was at a really heavy design boutique agency. So even though I went into account service when I started, I was constantly around really good design. And when I decided to be a recruiter, which who grows up and decides they want to be a recruiter? I don't know, but apparently I did. That was one of the first things I did is, gosh, I got to figure out what the heck good design is because I didn't go to school to be an art director. So I actually met with creative directors, art director friends, designers, really pretty much any creative that would sit down and give me five minutes and have them t show me their portfolio and then have them show me what they thought good design was. And what I started to notice is there is good design and then there's bad design and then there's mediocre. And in that mediocre, which you really don't wanna be, um, the mediocre, you can sometimes find people that just need a little more help and they just need a little bit more pushing and they're gonna be great. And then you have some mediocre that gosh darn it, they're just gonna be mediocre and that's okay. We need mediocre designers as well. So 
Um, but for you to be great and for you to be good, that is a really, really great idea is study really good work because then your eye will start to be, will start to see that. I mean, you'll just be, you'll train it. That's what you're doing. You're training your eyes. And so that's a, that's a very, very good idea. Um, okay, so maybe we'll move on to interviewing, which I know, again, we might be a little bit early, but for those of you that might be considering, you know what, we'll stop that, we'll go to internships because that is super crazy important. Internships, internships, internships. Um, they are becoming the norm now. They used to be, if you could get one, that'd be great, we'd recommend it, but you don't have to. It's now becoming, if you don't have an internship on your resume by the time you get out of school, you go into the no pile. And everybody that has an internship goes into the yes pile. Because again, when you graduate, you're graduating with thousands of other people that look just like you. So for all of us hiring managers that are hiring entry level grads, we have to figure out something to get through the thousands of resumes that we have. So one of the things that we do is, who has an internship? Who doesn't? There you go, half the people are out right there. So get an internship, get one, get one, get one, get one. Um, I know some of you might not have the luxury of having an unpaid internship, because I know there's a lot of unpaid internships out there and you're like, really? How am I supposed to live on that? How's that gonna work? Um, if you can find a paid internship, that would obviously be the best case scenario. Most of those places are gonna understand you're in school and if you have to work, they're gonna work with you. So it's gonna be, you know what? We would love you for this internship. Let's work out a schedule that works for you because we know you have to go to work. That's what I did. My internship paid nothing because it was like back in 1875 and um, it was like five cents and it was horrible and I had to ride a horse to work and it was terrible. Um, I had to work at night because it was so low paying, it was crazy. I do think things have gotten better, so, so that's good. Um, but they'll understand if, they, if, if you're like, I cannot work for free, but I'm not, I'm telling you it will pay off. So those three months that you have to work for free, if it's an incredible internship, it will actually bring you monetary dividends when you graduate because you will be the one that actually gets a job versus the other person that does not get a job. Um, so get one, get one, get one. There are resources in Kansas City if you're choosing to stay here, which I would have to think every other market would have this as well. Professional associations are a really good place for you to find information on internships uh, because those are all the companies that are already involved in the community. They already give back to their industry community. They want to help young people and they're already gonna be out there putting their information up about internships. So here in Kansas City, we have got a plethora of professional associations for you guys to choose from. If it's design oriented, I would say the two top um, uh, professional associations for you guys to pay attention to and to get involved in are AAF Kansas City, which stands for American Advertising Federation. Um, go to their website and they will have job postings. They've got an entire internship program. Um, they also have a, um, a mentoring program, which is tied to an actual scholarship. So you guys can actually apply for a scholarship and then you also get a mentor that is in the industry that you're paired up with for the year that meets with you, critiques your book, gives you all kinds of insider information. It's a really, really great thing to take advantage of. And so I would highly recommend that you guys check that out. We don't, I don't think we get a lot of Johnson County people applications for some reason. We get a ton from KU. KU just barrages us. Um, but, Yes. She applied and got it. Oh, well, but yay. She was an anomaly. Yeah, I, I just haven't seen very many. So I would recommend, because I just don't think, I, maybe Johnson County doesn't know about it, so obviously that's us. We've done a bad job of telling you guys about it. Um, the other one is AIGA. That is a no-brainer for being a designer. You want to get involved in that organization. Um, most of these organiza organizations are going to have student rates, so it's really stupid cheap for you to join. And joining is a good thing because you get access to their member rosters, which, hello, that right there is a gold mine. You get to find out who's doing what, where, and it is all about networking, networking, networking. Plus, AAF, and I know AIGA does the same thing, um, they have certain meetings or um, social gatherings that are geared towards younger professionals. Uh, they also have career building meetings. Uh, or career building events. So AAF, we have something called Career Day, which is 100% geared towards students. 
that have you guys come out for an entire day and then you choose a track you know maybe you're going on the creek obviously y'all would be going down the creative road and you go through different sessions of actually hearing from professionals talk about the real world and it's it's amazing um, plus you get to network with those people get their business card connect with them and who knows where that can lead to in AAF we have something called add to which pretty much every person that has ever chosen to get really involved in add to has had very good things come of it um, be it a job, uh, an internship, freelance work, contract work. Uh, if they get laid off, they've found jobs pretty gosh darn quickly. Add to is has something called virtual agency, and it, it, they bring together the young people that want to be part of this, and they find a nonprofit, and they donate for a year all of their marketing and design services to this nonprofit, which is a really cool thing to do. Yes, it's free work but it is a great way to build your book. So you actually get produced work in your book and do something and feel good about it. That is another really great way to build your book, is spec work. And if you've ever, I don't know if you've ever heard that term before, spec work basically is fake work. And you are totally okay to do it. Um, in fact, you can put spec work in your book forever. Um, nobody really cares, as long as it's really good work. Because the reality is, you're gonna go work for an agency or a company, not every day is gonna be filled with design bliss. Not every day are you gonna be producing the ads that everyone goes, oh my gosh, that's amazing, or the logos where you're like, that was the Nike swoosh, I did that. It's just not. Um, we're in the business to make a living. We've got clients that frankly keep the lights on. The work is not that great. They're not that fun to work with, but you know what? I got a car and a roof and I got some clothes, so it's working out pretty well. So spec work is your way of being able to flex your creative muscles and really show people what you can do and have that creative release and be able to still put it in your book and have your book look really cool and have really cool work. It's just fake. Um, and that's a great way, great thing to do as a student. If you're finding out, if you're starting to get towards the end of your your career here, which I doubt is going to happen, but let's just say it does, and you're like, oh, geez, I'm a little light on the amount of work that I could show. I'm just going to go do something for free. I'm just going to redo something. Find a brand that you're really passionate about or just anything that you're passionate about and redo it. Redo the entire logo. Redo the branding. Redo the package design. Redo the whole thing and show here's what it used to look like. Here's what it looks like now. Isn't this so much better? Um, fill your book with that. Another way to do it is giving back and doing nonprofits, nonprofit work. Nonprofits, especially coming out of this recession, everybody just basically was trying to make it. So you can imagine if you're trying to keep your lights on in your own house, you're not sending a lot of money to the nonprofits that were doing much better before this. So they're hurting. So for you to go to them and say, hey, I'm a designer at Johnson County. I would love to do whatever it is that you need me to do. They're going to go, are you kidding me? Yes. Would you design our winter ball gala invite? OK. And oftentimes, they give you total creative freedom because you're doing it for free. Now, you don't have to stress about like, oh gosh, how am I going to find printing? I mean, they're going to find that for you. But for you to be able to do that work and put it in your book and you feel good about it and they feel good about it, plus the connections, nonprofits have incredible connections to people. And so they might call you, that executive director could remember what a great student you were and what great work you did and literally call you and say, hey, so-and-so over at VML just called and they're looking for a young designer and I recommended you because I think you'd be great. Done. Done and done. So that is a really great way to, do, to build up your book. Um, if you're having, when you're building your website and if you're a designer, oftentimes designers use the right side of their brain. You guys sometimes are not the greatest spellers. No offense, but you're not the greatest spellers. That's okay. Get someone to proof your site before it goes live. Um, find a writer friend who is in journalism or is an editor or whatever, a nurse, I don't care, anyone other than another designer and get that person to take a look at your site. Because the minute that that thing goes live and there's, there's grammatical errors and misspellings, oh my gosh, not good, not good. So make sure that you have another set of eyes, look at your resume, 
look at the descriptions on your website and make sure that everything looks really, really, really good. Um, attention to detail. That's another thing. If you can start training yourself to pay attention to detail now, it is going to help you. And again, I know you guys are designers. I know that that part's kind of hard for you, but if you can be good at paying attention to detail and almost being a good project manager of your own projects, oh my gosh, that will help you. That will take you so far. Um, I've heard horror stories of young people that have got the Bernstein and the Barkley mixed up so they will send thank you cards and thank you emails to interviewing at Bernstein, but they'll say, thank you, Barkley. It was so great meeting you. Really? Because you were at Bernstein um, and vice versa. And that is not good, not good. So slow down before you send that email, before you write that thank you letter and make sure that Jane Smith really works at Barclay and doesn't actually work at Bernstein Rain. Try to remember where you were. Well, speaking of thank you notes. Yes. Thank you. Okay, so this is this is crazy. So for some reason, thank you notes went away. I, I don't know what happened. Back in again, 1875 when I was born, um, and then when I started working, I that was standard. You you went to Hallmark and you got that really awesome cream colored paper. There's a few of you that are might be my age, so I totally remember, with the awesome script that was like, thank you. And then you put it in your really cool, um, uh, the, the envelope with the, like, the other, it always had like little shards of color in it. Do you remember that? No. Okay, okay. Oh my gosh, yes you do, yes you do. And then you'd write it and you'd be like, thank you so much, da 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 da. And everyone did it. And you would go into a hiring person's office and they literally would have a stack of thank you cards up to here. And they'd be like, I'm taking it home this winter to burn for warmth. Um, Cause they had so many. And then they just totally went away. And then things sort of came back with email. And now majority of the time after you interview, the young person or honest to God, even old people, um, older people that should know better, we'll just send an, e an email thank you and just be like, hey, thanks a lot, da da da. I have started, well, I haven't started, I have always recommended, but I've especially recommended to my candidates, um, send a actual handwritten tangible thank you because nobody does it anymore, no one. So after your interview, you're gonna immediately follow up with an email, immediately because email is instant and unfortunately or fortunately, um, there's pros and cons, we live in a society of instant gratification. So people are expecting you to instantly say thank you. Um, get an email thank you to them immediately. Then wait a couple days, do a handwritten thank you or as a designer, again, you guys get to do something even cooler than a handwritten thank you and you can actually come up with a really cool thank you. Um, take your time to think about it. I, there was a guy um, years and years and years ago and he used to put his thank yous in Chinese takeout boxes and found really cool Chinese takeout boxes and literally, I, I don't know how the guy did this, but he somehow molded fortune cookies and you literally would have to break it open and inside it would say, your fortune has come true and you want to hire me and today is your lucky day. Oh, and by the way, here are your lucky numbers. And it was his phone number. I mean, oh my gosh, it was so cool. And it had like chopsticks in it. And he would actually go to the place, say he wouldn't ask for the person. He would just be like, this is for Bill Smith. If you could just get it to him. And people were like, okay, and take it to Bill Smith. And maybe he didn't get the job, but I will tell you that guy probably got freelance work, contract work, and he will never ever be forgotten. That's why I'm still telling the story after all these years. Um, you can actually do something really cool. You don't have to go to that extreme if you don't want to, but then again, you can. Or you can just do a really cool mail. I know, old cool, cool snail mail. Who doesn't love snail mail these days? I mean, seriously, when you get a letter in the mail, are you like, I am so excited, or is that just me? I'm so excited to get snail mail. I'm like, yes, it's so awesome. Um, so do snail mail, it's so cool. And you can do a really cool thank you that's got, oh, you know, logo design and some very cool illustration if you want to, or some incredible fonts. Maybe you're just incredible with fonts and you can just do some really cool stuff. Follow it up with a tangible thank you and I'm not kidding you, it will take you very far, including could be the reason between you and this person coming back for a second interview. 
And it may come down to you too. You got the tangible thank you. That hiring manager walks in and goes, look what Jane just sent. No way, she's so cool. I knew I loved her. Let's get her back in here. Boom, you've got the second interview, you got the job. I'm not kidding you. Um, and do that forever. Don't just do it as a young person. Keep doing it because I am going to bring the art of thank you letters back. One person from Johnson County at a time. Okay, it's gonna start right here. Um, so do that, it's very, very, very good. Also, because of social media, you have 50,000 bajillion ways, literally, I'm pretty sure we're up to that, up to that now, to connect with people. Um, when you have had that interview, make sure you connect with that person. Connect with them on LinkedIn. Probably need to ask their permission about Facebook. Facebook's still like, there's still that crossover of like, is it professional? Is it personal? Where do I go? I don't know. Um, LinkedIn's a no-brainer. Immediately go to LinkedIn, look them up, connect with them. Um, Twitter, of course, it doesn't really matter. You can follow them and oftentimes, if you're following a professional, you're gonna get a mix of personal and professional. Um, I don't know if you wanna follow them on Instagram or Pinterest, that might be weird, but I don't know, you could get some really cool craft ideas. No, whatever. Uh, but LinkedIn is the absolute no-brainer and probably Twitter that you, you would wanna follow from a professional standpoint and connect with them right after that interview. It's also a really great thing for you to do before you interview to check them out. If you can find out the names of the people that you're interviewing with before you go there, go check out all their social media. Find them on Twitter, find them on Facebook, find them on everything, and you will get a pretty good idea of who they are because guess what? They're doing it to you. They are absolutely checking you out. So here's what you get to start thinking about right now. Before you send that very first resume out for an internship, you better clean up your social media. So that starts today. Go home and be like, oh, I'm gonna take that picture down. That was not a good picture from last weekend. I had so much fun, but that's gotta come down. Uh, change your email. If it's not very professional, change your outgoing message. If it's not very professional, I've heard some messages from young people that I was like, your mama would be ashamed. Ashamed if she heard that. Um, you need to sound professional because these people are trying to get a hold of you. And so yes, they might email you, but some of them call and literally call and say, hey, uh, Shauna, we just got your information. We'd love to talk to you if you could give us, and if you've got a really unprofessional email or voicemail, I've actually heard hiring managers say they hung up and they didn't leave a message and they actually took you out of the running because the voicemail was so ridiculous. Um, so change that, change your social media. Let your friends know that you are applying for internships and jobs. Let your friends know that because while you might be taking this job search seriously, you can't control what other people are posting on your stuff. Let them know and just say, guys, respect where I'm at right now in my life and please don't post anything that is going to jeopardize that because What's so funny about social media is that it's supposed to be a free-for-all and it's supposed to be freedom of speech and we could say whatever we want. Not really, not really. You, you really can't. Um, not when you're looking for a job and they are definitely checking you out. HR departments now have people in HR that all they do is troll the internet for information on you. And if there's anything disparaging about you, if there's anything that kind of sheds you in a light that maybe you're not able to make the right decisions, you're out. They're, they're not even gonna bring you in for an interview. Um, and I'm sure you have already heard about people who are currently employed who post something and get fired over what they post. Yeah, it's not freedom of, it's not freedom of speech. Um, so just start thinking about it, and if you can start cleaning that up now, that would be a really, really smart thing because who knows how far back they can go. So start cleaning it up now. Um, okay, so I think, let's see, interviews. Um, again, we might be a little, a little early for this, but you're going to be interviewing for internships, and an internship interview is seriously exactly the same as a job interview. So get that experience now if you can. Um, do your research on the company before you go. That's kind of a given. Um, find out if it's an agency, what accounts do they have? What's their big news? Almost every agency in their social media universe has information about what's new with them. What new business did they just win? Who did they just hire? Um, what was maybe something new and exciting that they just came up with? 
find out what that information is and read up on it and know it so that when you go in, you can have an educated conversation about what they're doing. There is nothing more annoying. And, and to, this is crazy because this actually has happened with people that have been in the industry for way too long that should know better. But I actually have heard this where, and I think it, I don't know if it's lazy. It could be, I think it's laziness. And then I think it's just, they just don't care. They've been doing it for so long that they're like, I don't care, I'm awesome and you should just give me a job. They go in an interview, the company's like, so what do you know about that about us? And they're like, I don't know, why don't you tell me? And I've had hiring managers go and I walked that person right out the door. Well, thanks, thanks for your time. I don't think you want to be here at all, so let's go. All right, see you later. Um, thankfully, that has not happened to any of my candidates because I would be completely mortified, but I have heard stories of that, of that happening. So be prepared to answer that question because that is such a standard question you guys are gonna get. So what do you know about us? Oh, well, let me, uh, actually quite a bit. You guys have done a really great job of kind of putting, your, putting what's going on about you out there. Congratulations on winning the business. I know that happened a couple months ago, but still sounds like it was a really great account. That's super, super awesome. Interestingly, in one of my campaigns class, at Johnson County, we actually worked on a bank, and here's actually what I did. So the fact that you just won this bank business is kind of interesting because I have some relevant experience that maybe you would look at and go, wow, that's fantastic. Do you want me to show you now? Oh, wow, that, that's great. Yeah, let's take a look at your, at your work. Um, being creatives, this is another thing in your interview. You're gonna have the hiring managers that want you to just be quiet and let them look through your book and you're gonna freak out because they are gonna go through your book so flipping fast. And you're going, there is no freaking way that you have just looked at every single thing I've done in 30 seconds. Because they're seriously like this. Can you imagine if they're going that fast? Your work better be good. It really better be good because they're literally looking at, at it that fast. If that's the kind of person that you're interviewing with, what they're doing is they're looking at everything fast enough so that they can kind of Synthesize who you are and what you've done, and then they're gonna start talking to you. If they're doing that, just let them do it. Don't, don't try to break and be like, wait, but I, wait, wait, you just went past that. No, I won an award for that. No, wait, back, just sit back, let them do it, and then at the end, let them start the conversation with, okay, so when I was flipping through your book, I noticed about this. You're gonna have the other kind of hiring manager that literally wants you to go through every single page every single page. So what did you do here? What did you do here? What did you do here? And you're gonna have to go through every single page. That being said, be prepared with a story. Make sure that you have the story that's behind every single piece of work that's in your book. How did you get to it? How did you get to the finished product? What was your motivation? What was that spark that got you there? And what makes it different than maybe other people's books? And what are you really good at? Start thinking about that. What are you really good at? Um, maybe some of you are really good with fonts. I've got a friend who actually has designed his own font. He's a Johnson County grad. Jim Dore. Jim Dore has designed his own font that people actually go online and buy. And he makes money from people buying his font. Um, that's just a thing that he likes to do on the side and he thinks fonts are cool. There's people that are really, really good at color. They're so good at color. There's other people, like you said, photo, I'm not kidding you, there's a whole group of designers out there that are incredible with photography. And you want them on every photo shoot because when you, especially like fashion and um, custom work where you're actually hiring a photographer to do that, you have got to have an art director who is just amazing at photo retouching and all that good stuff. If you're good at it, that's what you want to showcase. And you just want to be like, this is what I'm good at and I'm really good at it and, and say what that is. Some of you are gonna be just gosh darn good at layout. You're just, you've got a really good eye for layout and you can work with crazy amounts of content. I can take the world's largest paragraph and somehow turn it into compelling design. And I know how to break it up and it looks this good. Figure out what that is and have that story ready for the hiring manager when they ask you about it. Um, there's nothing worse than having a conversation with a dead piece of wood. If I'm talking to you and I get nothing out of you and you're like, oh, so how was the, so how did you get here? Oh, I just thought it was cool. Oh, okay. Well, where did you start? Yeah, I was, you know, my teacher told me to just, you know, come up with it. So I, I did. 
Okay, so what are you good at? Whatever you want me to be. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, please no, please. Be specific, be specific about what it is that you're good at and what you wanna do when you grow up, when you grow up. Um, okay, interviewing, back to the interviewing. You can do research on the companies now. Back in my day, we did not have, we did have the internet, but it just wasn't the way it is now. And so actually for me to do research on a company before I interviewed with them, I had to go find newspaper articles on them with microfiche film. Yeah, and LexisNexis. Oh yeah, that was big time. Big time, I'd be in the library and looking at LexisNexis uh, newspaper articles. It was ridiculous. Now, you've got so much information at your fingertips. Another really, really great way is if you do get an interview, Go reach out to your social network and say, hey, I've got an interview with this company. Is there anyone that knows anyone that works there? Or if any of you work there, could I grab five minutes of your time and just talk to you about the culture and what to expect before my interview on Monday? It is amazing how many people are willing to help young students. It's crazy. The thing is, you have to ask. If you don't ask, they're, they're not just gonna give of their own free time. I mean, some of them do, but if you ask them, they'll totally help you. You just have to ask. That's another great way when you get out, if you're starting to notice that, you know, I would like more interviews than I'm getting, and I don't really know why I'm not getting in the door because I think my work's good. I, I don't smell, I took a shower, like what's going on here? You know what you can do, and this works every time. You reach out to someone you respect, in the, in the community that you're like, you know, I like your work. I think, I mean, flattery gets you really, really far in this business. So no offense, but advertising people are egomaniacs and we love to be flattered. So um, it gets you really far. So for you to reach out to that person and say, hey, I love your work. I really respect what you're doing. I'm a new grad. I'm just getting ready to graduate. I was wondering if I could take 30 minutes of your time, buy you a cup of coffee, could you look through my book and could I just talk to you about things that I need to know before I kind of jump in head first into this whole advertising game? You're gonna get two answers. No, which that's really rare actually. Or, yeah, I can spare 20, 30 minutes. Yeah, why don't you come on down and let's meet here. Or, or better yet, they'll probably say, yeah, why don't you just come to the agency and I'll show you around. Well, guess what? It's never gonna be just 30 minutes, ever. It's gonna be like an hour. They all, 30 minutes is this really great amount of time where it's not totally co committal. You're not super committing to anything, but what usually happens is you end up getting an hour of their time. If they say go ahead and come to the agency, they end up introducing you to people. They take you on a tour. You just got an interview. And you were asking for them to look at your book and for them to give you some information and you just got an interview. If they don't invite you to the agency, but they do say, yeah, why don't you, why don't we meet for coffee and I'll, I'll go through your book with you. Again, they're gonna spend more than a half an hour with you. And they'll buy you your coffee because you're a poor college student. <laughs> you won't even have to buy your own coffee. I've never seen a professional person make a poor college student buy their own coffee, ever. Um, so it's a win-win. So it's a really, really great, if that's something, and I know it could be out of your comfort zone where you're like, oh my gosh, it's like asking someone out on a date, what do I do? Um, Kansas City is such a helpful community in terms of advertising and marketing here. We're like crazy nice. And we're really entrepreneurial and we really wanna help and we really wanna give back. And so just ask. You will be amazed how many people come out of the woodwork to help you land your first job. You really will. It'll be very, very surprising. Um, get involved with the professional associations. They're fun. You meet a ton of people and it will help you build your book and network, network, network. And that's something to talk about networking. Um, are there student associations here on campus that specialize in advertising and design? No, we have a student chapter of AIGA. Oh, okay. Okay, well that's good. Okay, so that's something for you to get involved in. But even as a college student, you can still get involved with the ad club, with a, well, the ad club, we used to be the ad club, with AAF Kansas City. Um, as a college student, you can still totally get involved and it's a really great way to network. There's social events. Um, some of the educational events do cost, but when I say they cost for students, they're like five bucks. Um, and it's just one of those things, the more you show up to places, the more people you meet, and then the more, and then if you come back, people are gonna start to recognize and go, wait, I saw you last time. Oh wait, I saw you last time again. Wait, who are you, what do you do? 
And then before you know it, I'm not kidding you, you're gonna get a job interview simply because you showed up. I'm not kidding you. It seriously happens. Are there still opportunities to volunteer? Yes. These, yes. Volunteer? Every one of the events that a professional association runs is by volunteers. So the boards of these professional associations are all hardworking day job people like myself that keep these associations going and we're all responsible for something. And, and most of us do some sort of an event. We are doing it all volunteer and we need a group of volunteers. And so for you to raise your hand and go, yeah, I'll, I'll help out at that event. It might be you show up early and have to set up chairs. And it might be that you're helping get the speakers water bottles. You know, you might be doing actually run around stuff, but you're, wor you're gonna be surrounded by professionals in your industry you're gonna be able to show this, this hardworking attitude that you have and they're gonna notice. And they're gonna go, who was that? Oh, it's a Johnson County student. Are you serious? A Johnson County student just came here and volunteered to help. Oh my gosh, I gotta get their name. That's incredible. And that doesn't actually happen very often. Um, I had an event and had an, uh, the, I was uh, co-hosting this event with the Kansas City Area Development Council and they had an intern for the summer who came from K-State that guy worked his butt off. I mean, hard, hard, hard worker. We asked him to do the stupidest stuff like, can you fill up this chest, this uh, cooler with ice? And he was like, yeah, sure, no problem. I will always remember that. And if he ever calls me looking for a job, I will seriously help him. Fred, Fred, you know who you are. Um, the nicest kid, he was so hardworking. He had a great attitude and that went really, really far. And that's something to talk about too. Oh boy, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get on my, uh, I'm gonna get on my soapbox. That's like so old school too. I don't even really know what that means. That's even before me. And that's like a long time ago. Um, so having a good attitude. Oh my gosh, that goes really, really, really far. Um, there has been in the last few years, this, I don't know, this kind of entitlement attitude that has really kind of started to permeate the young people of our country. Um, and even in the good old Midwest, it's here and that is something as hiring managers and those, this is crazy because those of us that are generation X, we're now, we're generation X? Are we X or Y? If we're in our thirties, what are we? I don't even know. What, am, what are we? We are totally MTV when they played videos and it was awesome. Every day after school, white lion. I know. I did say 30s. I didn't say what part of 30s, okay? <laughs> Jeez. Yes, okay. So I don't know what I am. Generation X or Y, someone will tell me. So we're now in the hiring positions. We're getting promoted into management roles. We're getting promoted into director roles. And we're the ones that are, that are hiring you all. And the thing that I've heard from all of us in our second half of our 30s, um, what I've heard from them is, can I just get a young person that doesn't have an attitude? Can I just get a young person that comes in and is grateful to have a job and wants to work and doesn't complain and doesn't come in every month asking for a raise and doesn't come in and go, well, I showed up to work on time this week, so do I get a raise? No, but do you want a gold star? Good job. So happy for you. Yay. Um, listen, it's 4.59 and I've got to go meet my friends. So I'm going to have to like go ahead and bounce out of here. I'm not going to be able to really work late. Sorry, everyone. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Um, you guys will really stand out. Those of you that have a good attitude, that you're grateful for your job, that you're hardworking, that you're willing, yes, I know it stinks, but for those first couple of years, you're kind of like in a sorority or fraternity, you're kind of getting hazed. You are gonna to have to burn the midnight oil. Um, stay late, pick up those projects, get to know those people. Just have a good attitude and don't have this entitlement thing of just the world owes you because no offense, the world doesn't owe you anything. Sorry, I know, I'm so sorry. Um, yes. You did something really great to get where you are. You obviously beat out a lot of people to get there, but don't be a jerk about it. Be, like, be thankful that you're there and be grateful that you're there. And I've noticed it more, especially in the Midwest. Um, if you're gonna stay in Kansas City, I have, I have told people there's a difference between being cocky and being humbly confident. 
We want you to be confident. Confidence goes a long way. Just don't be cocky. Uh, there's a difference between the two. And if you can figure that out now, you're gonna go really far. And I've had, it's funny, it's, um, I, I will have hiring managers go a long way to tell me, I've got this young person that is so crazy. She just graduated, but she's like an old soul. She just, you know, she's so respectful and she shows up on time and she's thankful. She's got a great attitude and she's a Johnson County grad and she's just, she's so hardworking. Um, it will take you really far. I am not kidding you. You guys will get promoted quicker. You'll make more money faster. Nice people do make money, by the way. Nice people do finish first. They don't finish last. They finish first. So be nice. Be nice. It's really, now, you know, if you moved to New York or, I was just in New York and the people were so nice there. Why did they say, I, they were so, I was just there and they were awesome. So I don't know. I don't know where the jerky people live, but don't go there because they're jerks. Um, okay, so we've talked about having a good attitude. We've talked about. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So appearance. Um, the great news is you guys are going into an industry, especially if you go to an agency, it's pretty laid back. So there are cultures, agency cultures where I'm not kidding you. Everybody goes to work every day in jeans, t-shirts, and flip flops. It's awesome. Um, shorts even and raggedy. And some people you wonder if they've had a shower at all that week. You're not really sure. Um, there are cultures like that. Then there's other cultures where it's still an agency and you still get to, you know, be really laid back, but they do actually want you to shower. You know, one of those things. Um, if you go marketing on the corporate side, I have noticed that's still a little bit more professional. Um, even if you're a designer, I've seen when I've met people that are coming from like Sprints and Cerner's and Hallmark's, they still look kind of fancy pants and they have to go to work looking fancy pants. So. If you want to look fancy pants and be designer, go to Cerner and Hallmark. Um, but if you go to the agency side, again, do your research to find out what the culture is. Oftentimes, it is actually very okay if you're working directly with the HR person, it is very okay for you to say, I'm a new grad, I'm a student, I want to come there and I want to be my best. Is it necessary for me to wear a suit? You will probably get laughed at, but I would rather you ask. And the HR person will literally laugh and go, oh my God, are you kidding me? No, no. I mean, look nice, but no, it'll come in a suit. What kind of place do you think we are? But it's still good to ask. So I always say, I would rather you be overdressed than underdressed, um, because underdressed, you can never recover from that. Overdressed, who's gonna fault you for like looking too nice? I mean, not, not many people. So. I would say if you're gonna go to an agency that really does have a jeans culture and they're super laid back, I would think Banana Republic is the look. Um, this might sound really crazy, but I actually recommend to females wear pants. I know that sounds nuts, but the reason I recommend that is then you don't have to like worry about anything going on down here. You don't have to worry about, <laughs> you know, my, Skirt just ripped when I was like running to try to get into the interview and now I've got a slit all the way back up here and what am I supposed to do? Or, you know, God forbid you have to start running and you have to scale a tall wall. You're in, you know, you're in pants. It's easier to scale walls than in a skirt. Um, the other issue is you don't run into any problems where maybe like when you're standing, the skirt looks great, but when you sit, it's up to here. <laughs> and then you're like, well, shoot, I didn't plan that. And then the poor interviewer is sitting there trying not to stare, but it's all hanging out, so what can they do? I just say wear pants, and then you don't even have to worry about it. Um, and I also think, I know this sounds kind of crazy too, but I've had other females tell me this, is it does, it kind of puts you on level playing field if you're interviewing with a guy. I know, sorry dudes, I know I'm kind of putting you in this box, but you know, there's, there's boxes for a reason. Um, they, it just kind of makes you level. You know, you don't have to worry about sitting like this and looking all dainty and overly feminine and whatever. Be feminine, but I, but I kind of want you to be, you know, kind of, mm. So I say wear pants and think Banana Republic. Um, some of them will totally let you wear really cute jeans. I mean, honest to gosh, I have people, this is what I wear and I, this is like dressed up in the agency world. If I worked there, people would be like, are you interviewing today? Uh, no, I got jeans on. 
Um, so they might let you wear jeans, just, you know, just look good, take a shower. Dudes, you can wear a skirt if you want to, it might be weird, but um, I would also say, I would recommend even as a designer, edge on the side of cleaning up a little bit. Um, think banana, gap. I do think guys at an agency can get away with jeans with like a sport coat. And I mean, you guys can funk it up and it looks cool and it looks creative and you look great and you look really dressed up even though you're wearing jeans and some awesome concert t-shirt. Um, so I, I would just check with them. I do get questions a lot of piercings. What if you have a tongue piercing or a nose or multiple ears or eyeballs or whatever? Um, if it's gonna distract from the interview where you have a tendency to play with it like this, take it out. Cause that is gonna drive me nuts if the entire time I'm staring at you for an hour and you're going like this. Cause the other thing too is you might not know you have a nervous tick. And, a and you, you don't think you do that and really around your friends and family you don't. But then you get in front of an interview and the next thing you know, you have no clue that this is what you did for an entire hour. You didn't know. I had a girl years ago could not get a job, could not get a job, could not get a job. I finally, she was like, Jen, I need your help. I don't know what I'm doing. There wasn't a lot I could do for her because as a recruiter, she had already sent her resume everywhere. But what I did do is I met with her and said, okay, I'm gonna start interviewing you and I just, I just wanna watch you and see what you're doing. And we found out that she twirled her hair when she got nervous and she had longer hair. And when she would get nervous, she would twirl it which made her look really young and really not confident about what she was saying. And she had these really ridiculous long pauses where she said, um, like 10 times. And she would start to twirl her hair and she'd go, um, 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 while she was thinking. And I stopped her, I was like, okay, we found it. This is why you're not getting a job. And she had no clue she was doing it. And that was her nervous tick. So she had to go home and she had to work on it. And she had to like look at herself in the mirror and she had to have her boyfriend run through things with her and her friends run through things with her. And then when she finally was like, okay, it was a couple weeks and she's like, I think I've got it. She got an interview, she nailed it, she got a job. And it was literally from her stopping, twirling her hair and stop saying um 10 times. So find out if you have a nervous tick before you go in. Tongue rings, if you're gonna click it against your teeth or move it around constantly, oh my gosh, just take it out. Now, once you get the job, agencies, we don't care. I, I don't care if you have sleeves of tattoos down to here. I don't care. You could have a mohawk. It doesn't matter to me. It's just, if it's gonna get in the way of you interviewing, then I, I wanna be done with it. Because the other thing too, as a creative, some of you may actually find yourself in front of the client. And some of you, as you keep going, may find yourself being asked to be put in management positions where you are managing people and you're presenting to the client and you're presenting millions of dollars worth of business and you're winning this business. And if you have a nervous click of going on like this in front of a client for a pitch, they're not putting you in front of the client. So they're looking at you going, do you have confidence and do you have good judgment? Did you have good judgment to go, yes, I have a, a, a piercing, but I know I do it, so I'm gonna take it out. They're gonna notice that and go, you know what? That was a good judgment call. And then you can put it right back in when you get hired, and who cares? And then they're gonna show up and they're gonna be like, wait, who are you? And you're like, totally tatted out and pierced. And you're like, oh my gosh, who are you? It'll be great. Um, uh, tattoos, I've been asked that too. Do you cover them up? Do you show them? I don't know if you wanna wear a wife beater to the interview and let it all hang out. I would probably advise against that or if you, if you got, one of those, those ones here, what, a tramp stamp that you wanna wear such low jeans that you're like, hey, look what happened at a country bar a couple years ago. Um, probably don't wanna do that, but it's okay that you have them. And again, like I said, I've, I've, I've got friends with sleeves and they're in high level positions and no one would know, but as the years have gone by, they've gone into meetings and started rolling up their sleeves and people are like, dang. And it doesn't matter. And, and that's kind of the great thing about our industry is that we're pretty open-minded. It really is about the work you do and it's about your attitude and we could care less if you're purple, polka dotted, whatever. Um, smoking, if you can please refrain from smoking for some time before the interview so that you don't smell like an ashtray. Um, there's still a lot of people in advertising that smoke 
I think we have to because it's such a stressful job. But, um, but it's funny, but we don't want to smell like smoke and we don't want to smell smoke. So if you can refrain from doing that a little bit so that you don't smell, that would be really great. Remember to take your gum out because that's a really annoying thing too is like chewing your gum while you're in there. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. Okay, yes, this is a great story. Okay, so a friend of mine who's in a hiring position um, is interviewing account coordinators, which is an entry level account management job on the agency side. So like just graduated, you're in marketing, you, you know, you're not a designer, you're the opposite of design, but you still wanna be in advertising. Mm -hmm. And this young woman showed up for the interview with a very low cut shirt. Like, honestly, I don't know if she just forgot to get dressed that morning or she was running late or what it was, but it was obnoxiously low um, to the point where it was extremely distracting. And it was so distracting to the interviewer that it was even distracting to the people that were walking by because they were interviewing in their atrium area where everybody was walking by and people were walking by laughing and people were walking by staring and people were like, what the heck? Uh, needless to say, she did not get the job. And you know what? She actually could have been a really smart person and a really nice person, but honestly, no one was paying attention to what she said because everybody was looking right here. So if, if you are well endowed up here in this area, um, cover it up so that one, you don't have any mishaps of a button popping off and hitting the guy in the eye or what have you, or, uh, you know, or if it's one of these and it's, got that huge gap where you can like <laughs> stick an entire hand in there and be like, hey, how's it going? Um, just cover it up so then you don't even have to worry about it. And then guys aren't gonna stare and girls aren't gonna make comments and, and you'll get the job. So um, so yeah, that, that was actually was a story that, that I did here. As well as club wear, anything that looks like you're gonna go out clubbing that night. Another story was a girl that had a backless shirt which, how do you even wear a backless shirt? I mean, how'd that stay on? I don't know if she had like tape here or something, but like she walked in and was fine and then turned around, they were like, what the heck? I, apparently she had another job she had to get to later that day, I guess. Um, don't go clubbing when you go out on an interview. That's also a good thing to do. So, um, okay, so I think we've covered what you look like, what to do. On your interview, bring copies of your resume. That's always a really good thing to do too. Even though you've already sent your resume, these people are really stupid busy and they may have be running from meeting to meeting to meeting and totally forgot to print off your resume, so bring a copy, make their life easy. They'll be like, oh my gosh, I know we're supposed to meet, I totally forgot your resume, that's okay, I've got it. <laughs> boom, you are prepared. And you can actually say boom when you pass it because it's like super good, boom, <laughs> done, you're prepared. Um, questions, have I covered? What else can I cover for you? The difference between working at an agency and working for a client. Okay. And, and the cons and what that would do for your career. Yeah, oh yeah, and salary. We'll talk salary too, what expectations are. Okay, so when you graduate, you can go two ways. And there's the agency and then there's client side, which client side is anything that's not an agency. So it would be, um, working for Panera corporate and you're working in Panera in their corporate marketing department as a corporate designer. You could also go work for the agency that has the Panera account and does advertising for Panera on the agency side. The difference is if you go client side, you have one client and you're working for that brand for everything. Now, that doesn't necessarily suck. I mean, you could go to, I've got a friend who worked for Adidas. That's not a bad gig. That guy gets to work on the Adidas brand all day long and has a really fun time doing it and has a really great book. Um, so it really, it kind of, it depends. And then if you go agency side, either you could work on one account because it's huge and it's just such a big piece of business that you're working on one account but you're doing a ton of stuff, or you're gonna go to an agency where maybe the accounts aren't that big so you're working on a bunch of them which is kind of fun, especially if you have ADD or a hard time, you know, staying focused. It's kind of rad that you're like, oh, I'm doing this and then I'm doing this and then I'm doing that. So you could work on actually a bunch of stuff at one time. I, when you are starting out, the one thing you want to think about 
it's not necessarily should I go agency side or client side. It really is does the company have good design work that's going to build my book? Because if you go to an agency, chances are, if you know that that's what you want to do, you could go to an agency and you're going to find another agency job because you've kind of broke in to the fraternity, the secret fraternity of the agency world. Um, and once you've broken in, you're in. And there is kind of this fraternal order of us that we all kind of take care of our own people and you're in it. If you go client side and then you're like, this stinks, I wanna go work for an agency, it's a little harder, I'm not gonna lie. It's a little harder and the reason is, is you've only worked on one client. You, sometimes the amount and depth of work might not be as deep as what agencies, because agencies run a little slim, so boy, they throw you into the fire and they expect you to swim. Those two do not go together in any way, shape, or form. Which but is why it's difficult. It was super why it's difficult because you're in fire and you're expected to swim, which is weird. <laughs> so that's why. Um, but if you go client side, sometimes you're just not, the, the, it's just not the same. The, the deadlines aren't there as much. The budgets, they, they just, you know, hey, this is the budget, this is what, you know, oh, you need more? Okay, sure. Agencies, it's like, no, this is the budget, you better find a way to figure it out. And if you go to the agency side, you, you'll be able to get another job in the agency side, and you'll be able to go client side. Client side love agency people, because we have learned how to swim in fire. And they are like, anyone that can do that can work here. Um, but if you go to client side, just really make sure you're gonna do good work. Because if you go there and you work there for a couple of years and you one day wake up and look at your book and the work in there sucks, or you look and go, oh my God, I literally have three pieces. I've been here for two years and I can only show three pieces of my work. That's a problem. That is a problem. And as a designer, what we talked about is you always want to make sure that you're relevant and that you are keeping up on trends. And if you're working for a company that really doesn't care, so they're not allowing you to stay with the trends, you probably don't wanna be there because honestly, it's not doing you any favors. Yeah, you might be bringing home a paycheck right now, but in a couple of years when you're ready to move on, well, you're stuck. Congratulations, that's as high as you are gonna go. Um, so something, talk about salary. This is something that um, you guys are probably wondering, you know, I'm getting into this, so how much money am I gonna make? You're gonna make one million dollars. I know, I'm just kidding, I'm kidding. No, you're not. Like over 20 years you will, but you know, you gotta like put that all together. Um, you definitely did not pick this career to graduate and be mucho rich immediately, right? Did anyone pick this thinking they were gonna be loaded the day they graduated? Okay. Oh, did, did you know, like, oh my gosh. You have now since figured that out that did not happen, did it? Yeah. Um, you really are entering this field because you love it. So you're not gonna make a ton of money right out of the boat. So I just I wanna prepare you for that, I'm so sorry. Right now, I would prepare you that a starting salary could be anywhere from 28 to 32. For some of you, you're like, oh, okay. For some of you, you're like, oh, good God, I'm going to have to go get a second job at Starbucks. What the heck? Um, yeah, that's kind of how it is. Client side will most likely pay more. So you are going to get enticed to go to the client side because they're gonna offer you 34, 35, 36, and your friends at the agencies are only making 28, 29, 30. And you're like, yeah, well, I'm making 34, honey. The issue is you might go to 34, but you might only go to 40, and then you're a senior designer and you're making 40, and there's nowhere else for you to go there and your friends in the agency land are also at three years of experience and they're making 45 and they're up for a senior designer and now they're gonna be making 65 and now they're gonna be a creative director and they're gonna make six figures and you're like, I'm making 40 and I've got six years of experience. What the, wait, what just happened? So I, I caution you before you take that jump just because you're gonna make $4,000 more now may not be what happens down the road and you're gonna have your agency friends go right right past you. Um, you can make good money in design. There are some people I know that freelance 
that's what they do is they freelance for agencies and companies and they make a fantastic living. Um, I also know people that are currently art directors, senior art directors, if they choose a path of management and they get into being an associate creative director and a creative director, they're making six figures. And they're making good six figures. It's not like, oh, I make 100 and one. They're making good money. And that's in the Midwest. So life is good. Um, you can make good money. So I don't want you to think, oh my gosh, I'm stuck here for the rest of my life. The other thing is, what's, it's actually, it's a good thing. You do not want to stay anywhere for 20 years. Gone are the days of moms and dads who are like, I worked for the old insurance company for 35 years. Well, great for you, Grandpa, but that is not how it is now. Um, you don't want to stay there for 35 years. If you are constantly getting challenged, if you are getting promoted, if you've been able to work on lots of different brands, then you know what? You can stay there for a while because you'll be able to show that you've done a lot of different things. But if you wake up one day and you've been doing the same thing for 10 years, you gotta get out and you gotta get out now. Um, because what's gonna happen is you're gonna become complacent. You're gonna become used to what you're doing. Life's good, you know, I'm not really stressed out. But then what happens when you get laid off? What happens the day you wake up and you figure out that you're totally unhappy and completely bored and there's no room for advancement, but you've been doing the same thing for 10 years. And then when you look at your raises, you're like, oh my gosh, I've literally made a 2% raise for the last 10 years. It's, it's not worth it. So I tell people, look at it like every five years and reevaluate where you are. Every five years go, is this where I wanna be? Do I wanna be here? Am I challenged? Am I happy? Is this building my career? Is this where I wanna be someday? If it is, awesome. If it's not, you know what? It's okay to look. And our industry is very much more open-minded to people that do change jobs than other industries are. So people aren't gonna be like, what the heck, man? You're like, you've only been there for three years? What's wrong with you? Now, if you're changing jobs every year, well, we probably need to look at ourselves in the mirror and decide what's going on on the inside. Um, but to switch jobs three years, five years, seven years, it's fine. In fact, I would encourage you to do so. Um, so, have we covered everything? Gosh, I mean, I feel like I have, but gosh, there could be more. Do any of you have questions? I have a question. Yes. Um, this is regarding the salary situation where we talked about not taking a $40,000 job, you know, if you can make more with another company. Do you see it, is that the way it trends when someone comes in entry level 28 and makes a big leap? It, it goes up pretty quickly or? It depends on how good you are. I mean, it really does. I know that sounds terrible, but it does. Um, it depends on how good you are. Do you have a good attitude? Um, putting yourself in the right place at the right time. Being seen. Don't be a designer that hangs out in your cube, doesn't talk to anyone, and just puts their headphones on and busts out good design all day. If you're in a design boutique, that could actually go, maybe. But if you're in an agency, which an agency is filled with a lot of type A personalities that are all there to hang out and talk and we're all friends and, I mean, it is so incestuous. And we work together, we are friends together, we hang out on the weekends and, I mean, it's crazy. Don't hang out back there because when hard times come and they will come again, they're gonna go to a board and they're gonna be like, they're gonna start running down names and the management team's gonna go, nope, cannot lose her. Oh, uh, Jane Smith, I don't even know who that is. Who is that? I don't know. Yeah, she's some girl, she sits in the back. Oh, she's gone. I don't even know her. Be seen. Be the first one to raise your hand and go, yeah, I'll do that. But you haven't ever done it before. That's okay, I'm gonna learn. I'm gonna do it. Then you make yourself invaluable and then they can't, they can't live without you. You will get laid off. All of you will, no matter how good you are. You will get laid off. Um, we just, we live, I, I believe our economy is just never going to be what it was. And do not take it personally, unless you need to. Sometimes you need to take it personally because they're trying to tell you something. Um, 
if you really do think you did the best you could and you're like, I really don't know what I could have done better, don't take it personally. Brush the dirt off your knees, put some band-aids on your elbows and get back on that horse and go find your next job. Because sometimes it's a blessing in disguise. Sometimes it's like, oh my God, I didn't realize how much I hated that place. I'm so glad to be out of here. Um, but, but again, if a, if a company does offer you more money, another great way, I'm not saying don't take it just because it's on the client side and they're paying you more money. Talk to people. Again, with social media, you can find so many people that have worked there. Oh, there's another website that's really good, and I know there's a few out there, but um, I think it's called glassceiling.com. And glassdoor.com. Glassdoor mm -hmm. Okay, glassdoor.com. And you can literally put in a company name, and it's anonymous, right? Mm -hmm. It's all anonymous, and people will post what they really feel about this company and you get the juiciest information and you will start to see trends and you will start to see, holy cow, this is weird. Everyone that's posted this has said the exact same thing. Heck no, I'm staying far away from that place. Um, then you're gonna get mixed results, you know? And because again, we're human beings, one person's really bad experience could be isolated to them they were having a really bad day, they did not take their right meds, and you know it's kind of their fault they went crazy. Um, and then other people have a really fantastic opportunity, but go to those websites, and I know there's a few, I heard someone just say to me another one, but I can't remember what it was. But Glassdoor is the one I, I know about, and I look it up too, because I look it up from a client perspective, when I get a new client, because I really, I'm the salesperson, if you will. If, when a client calls me and says, hey Jen, we need you to go find a art director. I'm the first person that these candidates are meeting that's a representative of the company, even though I technically don't work for the company, they're meeting me and based on what I'm saying, they're putting their trust in me to say, yeah, I wanna to talk to this company. I wanna to talk to this agency, it's sounds awesome. Well, they meet me and I've said these great things and then they go in there and interview and it totally sucks. I look like an idiot. So I've gone on it to see what am I getting myself into? And I've had some clients where I've gone, um, no, thank you. I, I thank you so much for calling me. I'm so flattered, but hell no. Mm -mm. I'm not going to recruit for you. I'm sorry. Um, so check that out because you'll find out a lot of good information. What else? Yes. Um, we've heard from people from like Barclay and Blackhawk. But it, could you give us like some insight into other uh, like groups and places in Kansas City? Yeah, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Okay, I can speak a lot better about Kansas City. I, if someone said, "Tell me about the agents in Seattle," I'd be like, "I they're by an ocean, and it's cold and rainy, and I think they have good fish." I don't know. Um, okay, in Kansas City, we have a really it's, it's very cool. We're a very entrepreneurial town in general, not just in agencies, but in technology, in healthcare, in everything, which is, is great. Um, and in a, the agency world, it's kind of interesting. We had a bunch of agencies that all got started at the same time. I don't know. I always imagine there was like this group of young entrepreneurial businessmen that all were sitting around drinking their whiskey one night in the 60s, and they were like, let's all start out agencies. I'll do this one, you do that one, and you'll do this one. And out birthed um, Valentine Radford, Barkley, Bernstein Rain, um, and there were even there's even others, Wayforth Haas, which now is called BKV. I mean, there's lots more. There's there's others that are small that have always stayed small, and those now have become our big agencies. And then from Valentine Radford. The V in Valentine, I mean, y'all, I don't think there's really any of you that even remember there was an agency here called Valentine Radford, but they were huge. And um, they, they're, they're, they don't exist anymore, but the V is now the V of VML. So now you've got behemoth VML here in Kansas City. And then from there, we've got, you know, you've got the big ones. And then from there, you kind of drop down to this other group of still great agencies, but there may be like, 90, 80, 90, 100 people. And then you drop down to another group that are 50, 45, 50. And then you drop down to a whole other group that are only maybe 20 people. And then there's a whole other subgroup that are only 10 or less. And those companies 
need people too. And I have placed people at those companies and I know people who started at those little companies that have done amazing work, really kick butt the work that have then just kind of, you know, gone up the ranks and are now associate creative directors or senior art directors at the big shops and literally started at these, you know, 10 person. So even if an agency is only 10 people, don't poo poo it. Don't be like, oh, you're only 10 people. Look at the accounts they work on and look at their work because their work could be awesome. Um, there is a small firm here called Design Ranch and I seriously think it's like five people. Uh, started by two gals that have been around the industry for a long time. They don't want to be big. They will never be big. Um, you know, the fact that they're five, I think is like a big deal and they will always be small and they will always be very calculated when they add someone and they do incredible work, incredible work. Uh, and then we've got a new group of agencies that have really come on the scene. I, you know, in the last five years that do primarily digital, that's all that they do, but they're doing a really good job and they're now big and platform is huge. I mean, I, I seriously think, oh my gosh, they're 300 plus people. I think they could actually even be more than that. Um, they only do higher education advertising and that's how they grew. It's crazy. Um, and they, they became really good in the digital marketing of higher education. So they've kind of, they've trained a lot of people in that. And then in touch solutions, which doesn't even sound, I mean, you're like, what is that? Uh, the first time I heard them, I thought they had something to do with healthcare, massage, or telecom. But like touch, I was like touching. What are we? What are we touching here? Um, they're a pharmaceutical agency, and they're pharmaceutical digital only. And they're again 300 plus people with an office in Chicago, and that office is like 20 people now. Um, and then you've got DEG, Digital Evolution Group, that came on the scene years ago and has just grown, and they're digital only. So. There's this whole birth of agencies, new agencies that are out there. And for those of you that are very specific and wanting be, to be web and digital only, you've got some really great choices out there that have really great internship programs. Um, and then we still have great agencies that are producing incredible print. Um, like this design ranch, that's what they're known for is package design and logos and print. And I, I, I don't know, they probably do some digital, but they're actually still doing incredible print work. And that's what people hire them for. When a company says that they want a really great package, I'm going to Design Ranch or I'm going to Willoughby Design and I want a logo, so I'm gonna to go to Willoughby. Um, so there's a lot of really good options here in town. Uh, the one area that I would say we're probably a little light is motion graphics. If there's, was there anyone that said that they wanted to go into motion graphics and animation and stuff? Didn't you say that? I worked. You're in it? Yeah. Would you agree? We're pretty light um, in that area. It's, it's been up and down. There's been uh, companies out there like Bazillion that's been real successful. Out yes. Here. And then there's other companies that um, have maybe lasted maybe two years. And I know. Down, so it, it, Take Two is probably the one that has withstood the test of time that will be around forever. KC Creative was not done. I know. I know. We yeah. We're our world as a. Uh, the Kansas City and the motion graphics is a little bit, Bic Media is starting to get into some really good stuff. Um, and hopefully they will stay around a very long time. So. Trinity is still doing very well though. And who? Trinity. Oh, okay. Well. Oh good, I don't know them. That's good. Um, I was wondering if you only worked with like advertising agencies and stuff like that, because uh, I've never really been into advertisement or anything like that. I like illustration and photo retouching and all that, but I mean, I talk to schools sometimes that are like, we don't have anything for you. Like we, <coughs> there's nothing we have for photo retouchers and stuff like this. So it's always made me wonder like where, are, cause I know people like to photo retouch out there and I, on the internet and stuff, but I have really never met anyone else that that's what they want to do, you know? And I don't know where you would get a job doing that, but agencies, like anything like that. You'd probably want to go work for a photographer and actually work for the photographer. And interestingly, Kansas City also has a ridiculous amount of really good photographers. And that's been one of my questions when I've met a few of them that I've never heard of before. I'm like, can y'all really make a living? Because there are so many of you and you guys all are here and you're all making a living. I had no idea there was that much work. Um, 
So, and of course, it's not, they're not just getting work in Kansas City. They're getting work. You know, there's, a, there's quite a few really good photographers here in town. They get work nationally. Go there. And, I mean, you would work for a photographer. And you would literally retouch his or her work. Um, some of the larger agencies, there is a possibility they could have a full-time job because they're larger. So they're doing all of this, um, especially if they're doing, you know, like a Barkley when they had Sonic, so much of their work was custom, you know, they, they were doing their own photo shoots and there was, they weren't pulling in stock photography. They were doing everything on their own. I would guarantee you they had people, literally a team, but that's what they did. Um, I do know there's a couple of guys that come from that world that have gone out on their own and that's literally what they do. And they're freelance photo people and that might be what you end up being is a freelance contractor because there might not be enough work to keep you employed full time, but there's enough work to keep you, you know, one week you're here, you know, another week you're here, you have three jobs going at once, you can do it at home. I mean, freelance contract was, would probably be a really good route for you. And you can make good money. So. I met a guy in Chicago. He had his own retouch company for like the airplane companies. Uh, yes. And he made so much money. Yes. It was crazy. He could just wake up whenever he wanted, get on his computer, work with people from around the world because he could just send it off, you know? Yeah. 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 You can totally do that. Totally do that. <laughs> Any other questions? Oh, okay. Just uh, curious, this happened to me once or twice. I haven't done it, but um, to get your video or something like that. Uh, there's been a couple times where you drive down the road or something, you see like a billboard or somebody's logo, and it comes to mind, oh, I could totally do that so much better. Um, even though you have no relation to that particular company, um, I, I wanted to like redo that logo myself and kind of put something together and then send it off to them. Oh, say, I know. Hey, honey, don't do that. Or No, I thought the anything. same thing. Where I'm like, why, why, I, why are you doing that? Yeah. Are you serious? How could you do that? Probably not a good idea, but a super great idea for your portfolio. Spec work. Spec work. That's what I'm. That is a perfect example of spec work. And especially with you starting out, take a picture of it, redo it, and then put it in your book and talk about, put a story behind it. So I drive every day down I-35. I see this horrendous billboard with this horrible logo. Now, of course, if you're interviewing for that company, you might not want to say that <laughs> and hope that the person on the bus that you're talking to does not work for that company, but most likely you're not. And, um, and show, you know, here's the picture that I, you know, I took a picture on my phone, printed it off, here it is, or show it on your phone, and here's what I came up with. And this is why, this is why I chose to do this. And then that's what I talk about telling the story. Don't just go, here's what it is, and that's what it is. Doesn't it look better? Well, yeah, it looks better. But why? Oh, because here's what I was thinking of, blah, 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 blah. And it, it's interesting because as a designer, you're gonna put a lot more thought into what you do than us, the consumer. Sometimes we get it. Um, I don't know if you heard about, I guess Wendy's, they redid Little Wendy. And um, there's all this speculation on her collar that they purposely put the word mom in there. <coughs> and so, that as a, as a create as a creative as a designer whoever did that they love it that people are wondering whether they put that in there or not wouldn't you love to know if they really did or didn't because whoever it is that did that knows the answer and they either are like oh crap I didn't even know I did that <laughs> wow or they're like yes someone figured it out I totally put it in there that was awesome um, I don't know if you do this, but when I was in college, I had this great campaigns class and a professor that showed all of these old advertisements. And I, I'm, when I say old, it was like the 20s and 30s and 40s and 50s and 60s and of subliminal messaging that they did. And, and even, I mean, even present day that they do. Oh my gosh, it was crazy. I think you guys could probably just Google subliminal advertising and look up some of these ads. A lot of them were, of course, for alcohol. And it was like, I had, when I looked at it, you don't see it, but then when he started pointing out, I was like, well, that's just gratuitous and wrong. Um, I'm like, oh my gosh, shooting my daughter's eyes. Don't look at that. It's too late. It's just already seen it, it's too late. So, but that's spec work, perfect example. Do it, yes. Um, when I got my bachelor's back in 2006, 2007, my 
it was really popular for design companies and animation studios to have practical exams and tests for the students to make sure you're proficient in the software and, and a good fit. But I didn't know, I don't know if that's so popular to do in the agencies or even if it's done up in the KC industry today. And it's, uh, I'm I don't hear of that as much anymore, um, which, whew, aren't y'all kind of like, oh, thank God. Oh, my gosh, I can't imagine. Now, I have heard of project work, and I have heard of, um, especially on the web design side, sorry, those of you that are wanting to be web designers, I have heard, um, and I've actually worked on some projects where, you know, we got down to our final two, and the final two candidates were asked to do a mock website like this the first two pages of a mock website and they were given all the creative brief and all the parameters and then they were judged and then they were asked to come in and present their concept and then they were judged on the presentation and the design and basically whoever did it the best did it got the job um, I have heard of that so I have seen some project work so be prepared you could be asked to do that um, if you if you're not yeah. The, 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 the other thing that kind of is weird, but see, as a young person just graduating, I wouldn't freak out about this, but those once you get into this field and you've been doing this for five, six, seven years, I would ask about the project work because the other question is, are they stealing your work for, you know, are you gonna get paid for it? Because what if you come up with this really great concept and you think you're interviewing for a job and then they use your concept for whatever it is they're working on? What the heck, man? Um, so as you go on in this field, I'd probably question that a little bit. Like, you know, is this a, is it a fake client? Is this a real client? Will I be paid for my time? Um, but starting out, you could be asked to do it, and they could be. It could be a little bit of a test of you say you know the software. How well do you know it? You know, you say you're an expert in Adobe, you know, CS. Are are you really? You know, how good are you? So be prepared. But I actually don't see it as much as I used to. And I used to see it all the time. Whew. Thank goodness. Oh, digital portfolios. My last thing. Um, more and more people are just moving to, to, like I said, you know, having your, but when you bring your portfolio in, I, more and more people are just bringing in their laptop or their tablet and just literally running through your portfolio right there. If you have 3D pieces, package design or direct mail, just bring them with you. There's nothing wrong. It's not like you, I mean, sometimes showing a package is just cool to touch it and feel it versus, well, here's it on a flat screen. Um, bring those pieces with you. Or if there's just some amazing posters you did that are huge and it's just way cooler to bring them, you can bring them. But most people are just, lo you load your portfolio on your laptop or your tablet and you just run it through at the place. So, yes. Uh, video resume, are you starting to see companies more where they're taking your resume, but then instead of doing that initial phone screen call, they do the video, they send the video to the, the Skype. Um, no, it's not Skype, so it's not a conversation between the two. It's a video um, that they send to the candidate, and then they have the candidate answer like 20 questions. So that initial phone screen that you would do as a recruiter, uh -huh. um, that basically takes that away because they set that video software up and oh. it give them three minutes to look at the question, answer the question, and, you know, have we, I guess, not no. <laughs> It's, yeah, it's very no. interesting. <laughs> I have no, my clients, I think, are probably too cheap okay. to <laughs> invest in that. Uh, yeah, sorry, clients, <laughs> sorry, no. They're not, no, I haven't had to do that yet. Uh, I've had. Is a, is a place? What, it's an engineering. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, okay. They, they have that set up now so that once you apply, you instantly get that, wow. that invitation to do that, that video screening of yourself. I see pros and cons. I won't go into that, but yeah. I have had questionnaires where prior to the interview, we're going to send out these 10 questions, answer those 10, and then we'll evaluate. Some of these questionnaires are hilarious. It's like, if you were an animal, what would you be and why? If you were, you know, on an island, what's the one tool you would bring with you? Like, some of them are, you know, just fun and wanting to get to know your personality, especially agencies are going to do that. So, um, yeah, and I think it's probably our industry, maybe. They're not, they're not doing that. No, I don't know any agencies. Not in Kansas City, but, you know, we're Kansas City, so we don't, we don't jump on all the 
the new trends immediately. We let everybody else go through it first and then we'll decide if we want to do it or not. No, I'd be nervous, oh my gosh. I guess you could just get dressed from here up, right? <laughs> from here down, you'd be in your sweats and pajama pants. Right. Funky toes, nobody will know. Anybody else? Any other questions? Amazing information. Oh, oh my gosh, it's probably overwhelming. I'm sorry. You're like, oh my gosh, stop talking. Actually, I think that when students graduate, we should do this class. Just have you come in and, and speak to them because I think it'd be great to hear again. Yeah. I know. Thank you.